Hello and welcome back uh, to our second uh, session on our ladies' night tonight. Um, this time um, it's going to be about the open Acravit test strategy. I think that's a very, very interesting and important topic for the whole of the uh, Java ecosystem and community. And so I'm I'm very pleased to uh, say hello to uh, Langsia and uh, Sherry Lambert um, that uh, even join us from uh, far away. And um, we are very happy that you will um, tell us everything about that. And um, I will uh, look at the chat and if there are questions, um, you can take them either uh, directly, answer them directly, or I will uh, talk to you at the end about that. But uh, no more words from me. Here is your stage and uh, let's uh, have fun. Great. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you. Um, and uh, yes, we're coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Uh, so <laughs> I'm wearing the appropriate uh, gear for this time of year. We've already had a couple of snows and uh, it also happens to be Adoptium merch. So you can get some if you find us at some in-person conference. Um, but yes, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll kick us off today and Lan will do all the heavy lifting at the end of the presentation <laughs> with the really good stuff. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we have this strategy. So. Uh, if you want to just move us forward, Lan, um, we're going to give an overview of the project quickly, uh, the top level project called Adoptium and a sub project that's near and dear to our hearts, Aquavit, talk a bit about why it exists and how we structured it, what features are uh, kind of most heavily used and some of the future plans that we have in store. So uh, first of all, in case you weren't aware, um, we are uh, talking about, and both Lan and I are on the, um, both the P PMC, so the Technical Steering Committee essentially, and the Working Group of Eclipse Adoptium. It's a large a project uh, hosted at the Eclipse Foundation, and we have many members. Uh, we're very happy that not only Red Hat and IBM are members, uh, but that we have Google, Microsoft, Huawei, Alibaba Cloud, um, Azul, Canonical, Bloomberg, Arivos. So a real range. And I, the iJug is also a member of our working group. What I like about this is that uh, we have representation from both very large companies, from enterprise companies, and from user groups uh, at our working group. So what we're really going to be focusing on, however, is uh, a sub-project of the top-level um, Adoptium project called Aquavit. Uh, and this is something that Lan and I have been working on together for, I'm going to say, <laughs> six years or more, because it kind of was born out of work we had done together, uh, not in open source. Uh, it it uh, encompasses uh, several uh, open source repositories, each with their own function. And uh, we'll dive right into a little bit of the detail of what Aquavit is and why it exists. So Aqua stands for Adoptium Quality Assurance. And then the Vit is both for vitality and speed. So can we be vital? Can we actually test our, our Tamarin distribution, which is an open JDK distribution? Um, can we do it in a way that is um, fast, effective, um, allows all the different people who we imagine would use it to grow it in whatever ways they need, so flexible? So the, uh, obviously the pieces around this that we wanna engage those major Java vendors that already have distributions um, to have a standard way to test their binaries. So establishing uh, the de facto approach to quality assurance through this project as a centralized place where we can all come and improve the world and improve the Java ecosystem 
for uh, outreach. We also want to figure out who uh, are the consumers of the OpenJDK distributions, talk to them, find out what pain points they're experiencing, what types of testing they do within their own shops so that we can incorporate it out into the open. So this is really a shift left instead of all of us working in our private little areas behind closed doors, bring this piece out into the open and share the cost and share the uh, innovation and collaborative work that we can do together to lift something up a little higher than we could if we were all working independently. And then of course, uh, this helps us extend the credibility of Java in the cloud and in any environment where we see that it's running uh, on mass. And uh, right at the very beginning of this process, we decided we better set up a list of criteria that we want to run the project by. Um, it was extremely important to us that this uh, effort be open and transparent, uh, that everyone could see what was happening, that there were no private test materials that people couldn't get access to. Um, also, making sure that that set of tests that we pull into this project uh, or write as part of this project was diverse enough and robust enough that it would effectively test the heck out of a JV, uh, JDK distribution. And then make sure that it doesn't just sit there and become stagnant. So invest in it in the open so that it evolves alongside the implementations. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced this before, but sometimes in certain environments, uh, quality assurance takes a second seat. Uh, you set up tests and you actually, um, uh, they, they kind of become stale over time. We didn't want this to happen here. And uh, the additional two pieces of this criteria, why, how we wanna run and function as a project would be making sure that this was easy to run, easy to pick up and run anywhere, and that we had a very clear way to tag and publish what we were doing, so that if you had to go back and prove that something was running or verify or triage and uh, debug something, it could easily be done. All right. Um, and Lan, you're going to shout out when I hit the point where you want to take over, but I, I will happily talk about the Adoptia Marketplace because this is a location where all of the members of our working group who have their own JDK distributions can list them and people can go and easily find these distributions at the Adoptium uh, website. Uh, adoptium.net slash marketplace. And what's wonderful about this is that um, anyone who's going to pick up distributions from this location knows that the binaries that are at the site, listed at the site, have to have passed both the compliance tests and these quality uh, assurance tests that are part of Aquavit. And I will talk briefly, because I know this question comes up a lot, well, what's the difference between the compliance tests that come uh, from Oracle and are a very private set of tests and Aquavit? Well, first of all, one difference is Aquavit is open and transparent and the other ones, the compliance tests are not. But the main difference is they're testing two different things. So they should be considered as complementary to each other. The compliance tests are testing whether the the binary conforms to the Java specification. The quality tests are testing things like whether something is functionally correct, whether it's performant, whether it's secure, whether it can stand up uh, to heavy loads. So it's quite a vastly different thing. And if we have time in the uh, question period, I'd also like to give my analogy about wait staff so that that's better understood. Um, the API is getting uh, serving up a lot of downloads uh, per weekday. Uh, and I do also want to say at uh, the start of this week, on Monday of this week, we hit a high of 700,000 downloads. Um, so this uh, trend of people coming to our site and picking up high quality 
uh, distributions is just growing and growing. Uh, so yes, we are um, happily serving up a lot of different consumers, a lot of different binaries, different versions di for different platforms, and all of those need testing. We can't ignore any one thing that we're uh, putting out there in the world. So I guess uh, a lot of stats. We're going to move on now to some of the some of the real interesting features. And Lan, I can't remember if you were taking over from here or if I, I'm still going. Uh, you're still going. I'm going awesome. to take after the start of architecture. Oh, All wait. Right. I will dive into the details. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. OK, so um, here we have a, kind of a top level view. And the reason it's an outdated uh, picture in the sense that it's still showing you know, eight Java 16 and 18. But just imagine in that middle uh, line with the gray, um, that that's actually a set of versions that are active at any given time for us. Uh, there's always going to be the LTS uh, distribution, so 8, 11, and 17 at the moment. 21 now is here, and that is an LTS. So those are always things we're always testing. Plus, we're testing whatever is the tip. And potentially, we also test things that are off in branches. So when you multiply these layers here, uh, the number of distributions we test and can test, uh, the number of different platforms, so uh, and multiply that by the number of different tests that are part of the Aquavit project, we get to seeing, you know, nearly 90 million tests that we run for any given uh, release uh, where we're trying to test up, which means a lot of things, I guess. I don't actually like to throw out this number and everyone goes, ooh, that's a lot of tests. Because if we're doing our job right, we're actually reducing the amount of tests but finding more bugs. So that comes around to when we talk about the innovation pieces in this project. Um, before we move on, I did want to say something as well around quality assurance and testing, because I think it's important and it was important to the people who work at the project and our core committers. We do some manual testing, but we're not sitting around clicking buttons. Um, this is a full on software development project where we're writing a lot of code. We're creating tools. We're refining our approach. We're doing a heavy amount of innovation. Um, at, I would say more than most of the other sub projects un under the, t the Adoptium banner. So um, it's important for me to say that because sometimes the uh, work of quality assurance depends on the environment you're in, can sound like it's a diminished, a diminished piece of work but I am so thrilled about the types of uh, innovation and changes we've done under this project that I can happily say this is a, an elite squad of folks working at the project. And I'm excited about what we can bring in the future. But I will hand it over to my super smart colleague, Len. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shelley. I'll, I'll take... Uh, it from here, uh, like Shelly said, what's fun about this project? It's really the the innovation piece of this. We uh, we build our architecture um, so that you know the hard work can be done by you know the pipelines, and then we can just free ourselves and do learning new things, and then try to innovate, uh, come up come up with uh, new ideas to simplify the work process that we have. Uh, speaking of that, uh, we have this whole architecture called three-layer cake. That's how we structured our testing pipeline. Um, so if you look from the bottom up, the first layer is TKG, test kit gen. So this is basically um, a layer that allow us to standardize uh, in a way to run the test. Um, it can run now locally or it can run on Jenkins. So a lot of us do slice and dice and run it um, in, in, in a standard way. The second layer, the middle layer is the CI system. 
um, as you can see here, which we will talk later in, in the presentation, we can use different CI servers, so Jenkins, uh, Tecton, DevOps, GitHub Action. Um, so that layer basically is for scheduling the job uh, uh, on the different platforms. Then, um, then we have the top layer, which is the uh, test result summary service. This is the third layer. It requires the first two layer to work together. Um, the purpose of the third layer is basically to monitor the result because we, as Shelly just demoed, that we run lots of tests. How to triage those tests? Um, it's a challenge. So that, that TISS comes along here to help um, us to quickly find out the root cause of the problem. So with that, um, I will dive into details to talk about each layer that we talk about here. So the first layer, TKG, uh, we have different type of tests that we call group. And then with that, um, it comes with a different test framework. Java has been around 20, 30 years, close to 30 years. And um, there are lots of test framework out there and um, they all run differently. They have th their own options um, to tune it. Um, so to ask a user to remember all those different command is just impossible. Um, to make this easy, uh, we have a thin layer TKG, which allowed us to set standardize and run those tests with a simple make command. Um, in the, uh, this is just a dive down um, in terms of how many tests we have in each group. Um, I do believe this is outdated as well because we're constantly adding new tests. I recently were adding the SSL test um, that's soon going to be incorporated into um, our quad test group. That's a security test. So this is just a quick view of the number of tests that we have. Um, so the, in, in addition to TKG providing the standard um, way of running the test, it, it allows us to um, slice and dice. So in terms of group, we have functional system, open JDK performance, and external. Um, each group, we also um, subcategorize it to be different level. So we have sanity, extended, and special. Um, and then, um, there's different target in the playlist. So the idea being that um, depends on the use case. Say if I am running the test in a CI server, so I would like to run a group of tests. So in this particular case, I can run sanity.openjdk, or if I, if I want, I can run the whole JDK. Probably will take a long time, but I can run that. But if I want to run the subset, I can run the sanity.openjdk. Um, but if I'm developer that, that try to debug a specific test case, then I don't want to run a group of tests. I probably want to run the test that relate to the failure. So in this case, we can run uh, a test in a playlist file. So JDK and school math will be one of the example, or we can even to run individual class if we want to. So really TKG provide us this ability to do so. Okay. So we talked about TKG, which allowed us to run. Then we talk about the second layer, um, the CI layer. We will, uh, so we will start with Jenkins, but then we will talk about other CI server that we're using. Um, this is really high level graph that um, we basically build and then we test and we run all the tests in parallel. And then if build fails, we will not trigger the test. If test failed, we will not manage the deploy. Um, this is basically break down into how exactly are we running the parallel. So using functional tests, as example, uh, we'll break down into different levels. So sanity extended and special. With that, we'll further break it down into different test list or test bucket, if you will. And then a um, user can decide how many test lists they want to run um, based on the TRSS data basically stores the historical data of the test execution time. Um, and then we can balance the workload and distribute um, the, the test into different test lists. The whole idea is when we run it in parallel, we want to um, achieve the best optimal throughput. 
we will talk about smart parallelization later in a slide. Um, so this is basically a high level overview here. Um, this is a Jenkins uh, screenshot that we have. So basically we categorize the test build based on JDK version, JDK input, test category, and platform. Um, all the test build that you see here are auto-generated, meaning that if we have a new Java version comes along, let's say Java 22, we have a new um, JDK implementation or test category or platform, we can uh, we don't need to do anything. Um, the test pipeline takes care of itself. It will auto-generate um, those new things. And um, if uh, let's say our Jenkins system is down, uh, it's went down and within 20 minutes, we can automatically regenerate all the test jobs as needed. Um, so this is a really good way for um, free ourselves. Um, that's why I'm basically taking care of it. Um, so now let's switch. So um, we talked about Jenkins. Now let's say different CI server. Uh, we're also leveraging the GitHub Action. Um, so we're using the free GitHub runner at, um, at, at the GitHub. Uh, then we can use, this is basically uh, a command triggered um, a GitHub Action. So we, we have this run aqua. Um, in the left, you can see that I'm just basically triggering it with a simple command. Um, we're running using the SDK from nightly, and I'm running a particular test from the function functional group, and then that's on JDK 11 and then on X Linux. Um, so if you still remember that three layer cake we're talking about, so we are just changing the CI layer to be GitHub action, but we're still using the TKG layer underneath. So if you look at the console output, it should still look the same thing as you run from the Jenkins. Now let's change again. So uh, we change the CI layer to use Azure DevOps. Um, again, same idea, we just change the CI layer, but then we're still triggering the TKG layer. So we get similar test output, console output. Um, the benefit here is that um, user does not need to train and uh, have a, they don't have a learning curve to switch between a different CI server. Also, this also allowed the TRSS to be able to pull the data in and um, display the result. Okay, now we we'll talk about the third layer. Um, so just to recap, TKG is running the test. Um, the CI layer is scheduled it on a different machine. Um, then we need something that to help us to monitor the result and help us to navigate to uh, quickly find out the root cause of the problem. So this is where the TRSS comes along. It's basically um, a tool that providing the filtering, sorting, comparing features um, so the, that the trudger will be able to quickly get in, into the root cause of the problem. And we have a public server that's available at trss.adoptdm.net. Um, then you guys can wa uh, welcome to go and check it up. And also the code is available at adoptdm aquatest tools. Um, this is just a quick overview of what TRSS um, is about. We have uh, React front end, and then we have another JS, uh, and also the database is MongoDB. Um, the front uh, we have different workers. So the front end worker is basically responsible uh, to the client request, and we also have back end worker, which is basically moving to the Jenkins, and then. Uh, passing the data, inserting the data into database. Uh, we have a couple of screenshots from TRSS. Um, don't worry, we don't expect you guys to understand every detail of, it, of this, but basically we'll just try to um, highlight and show some of the key features that TRSS is able to provide. So in this um, screenshot, this is basically the grid view that we have. Uh, when you run the pipeline, then the TRSS will be able to monitor the pipeline and show you um, basically per version, per JDK version, per um, the 
platform. So you will see the different platform that we run in that particular pipeline. Uh, we try to uh, have the icon, uh, same icon as Jenkins job. So the red, uh, the, the green means pass, um, the yellow triangle icon meaning that there is test failure in that build, and also the red meaning there's test failure. Um, well, obviously, for a church person, they don't care about the green ones because that's not interesting. Um, they probably want to uh, they more care about those uh, uh, yellow ones and the red ones they want to. Then, then people can drill down and click on to, um, to understand the details. So there's additional features here as well. Um, so, so on the bottom, basically, we're showing each test and then the history view, uh, history result of the particular test, um, and then the trends um, of the performance test as well. So the whole idea is, uh, again, uh, allowed the charger to quickly find out: Oh, is this the intimate? Uh, in intimate issue if is this the particular issue on, on a specific platform or is the is the issue that happens across all the platform all the version yeah and i think it's important to note there that those little chiclets those colored chiclets can represent eight thousand nine thousand test cases each uh, so you don't want to be looking at them in a different way until you have to <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, so um, I we just talk about the three layer. Now we're gonna uh, just talk about some highlight features that we have. Uh, one one of them is basically the dynamic compilation. Um, the idea is simple. Uh, we have so many tests, and then uh, we don't want to compile all the tests when we run um, when we run the when we run the build. We only need to compile the tests that related to the run that I have. So let's say, for example, I have um, a thousand tests in a functional bucket, but I only run one test. So I only need to compile that particular test. So this is uh, this is where dynamic compilation comes along. So in the left, you see before we will take about um, 15 minutes, around 15 minutes to compile uh, the whole uh, bucket. And now we're taking uh, around half, 30 seconds for a particular test that you want to run. Um, so <laughs> smart parallelization, we mentioned a little bit earlier. So what does this really do is that we provide the ability um, to separate the test into a different bucket. Um, basically, we have, because we have TRFS, we monitor the test, so we know the execution of each particular test. So we have those all in the database. And then a uh, user can come and say, I want to run the test and split them um, into three buckets because I want to run them um, in, on three machines in parallel. Then the TKG will call TISS to get the execution time and then distribute or, uh, or separate them into three um, buckets so that we can achieve the best um, optimum throughput. So if you, I know the font is quite small, but if you look into details, um, all three lists here are taking about 59 minutes to run. Um, another great feature about the smart parallelization is that it can run it, uh, you can tell the expected completion time. So um, now everybody are moving to cloud, so machine, um, it's not a, a constraint anymore. So, uh, so instead of we tell um, the TKG uh, saying I want to run it on three machines in parallel, we could say I want to get this test finished within half an hour. Can you help me to divide? So the TKG in this particular case will try to calculate and um, um, and then divide it on as many machines as it needs to complete the test run within thirty minutes. So that's a really powerful feature that we have. Uh, so the next one is Deep Aquatic uh, Project. So um, we want to leverage machine learning because triaging, it can be a really heavy work because we're running tests weekly, daily, basically. Um, so how can we leverage machine learning? This is one way that we basically start our 
um, try to explore and experiment AI into our pipeline basically is we're looking at Git issues, um, test failures and matching with the possible Git issues and then using machine learning to let us know whether um, those issues are related to the failure that we are seeing. Um, so as you can see here, so uh, the the machine learning will give us whether it's highly likely or medium or, or low um, categories and then where user be able to also provide the feedback as well. Um, another new feature that we actually introduced recently is the container-based portable testing. This is basically a workflow for um, testing um, instant on features that we have. Uh, the challenge here basically is um, we have to test a lot of combinations of container OS, host checkpoint OS, host restore OS, and micro architecture. On top of that, we're talking about different platforms. So the, uh, um, the combination quickly adds up. Uh, um, and then we have to, once we create the checkpoint, and then we have to push into the private Docker registry uh, and then pull it in. Uh, and then when we land on the host to restore OS, we have to pull it down. So uh, we have a pipeline that are created and so be able to handle all this automatically. It is part of the Aquabeat pipeline right now. Okay, so future plan. We have lots of stuff on our to-do list. Um, and we only list a few here, some key ones. We want to test smarter. As Shelly mentioned, uh, we have lots and lots of tests. Um, so how to be smarter and more effective? One way we're thinking about it is change-based testing, um, leveraging uh, the co-coverage results so we know which tests are um, covered which lines and which line is covered by which tests. By using this information, we'll be able to um, suggest to a, a committer uh, when they review a PR, we're saying, okay, this PR, we think um, you should test, running test X, Y, Z, uh, rather than running a whole sanity.functional or whole um, sanity.openjdk. So that's, that's what the change-based testing is about. Also, there is a bug uh, prediction service um, that we used to have um, for old server, but we want to revive it for the GitHub. Uh, it's basically um, the the idea is that the more you edit a file, um, the high the, the, the possibility to become higher for for the bug to be to, to happen in that code. So we're looking at the Git commit. We're predicting what where uh, in a code that bug can happen. And based on that, we can write more tests for it, or we can be reviewing more cautiously on those PRs. Um, of course, we want to continue to reduce the technical debt and then streamline the process. For the enhancement, one thing I want to call out is probably the auto test run, or the auto test rerun. So we want to be smart in terms of testing. We also want to be smart in terms of the triaging. Um, if the test failed, we can automatically run those tests to determine whether those are um, intermittent failures, whether those are, um, or, or those are persistent failure, or just related to particular machines. The rerun will give us additional information. And we can rerun with different JVM options to basically to, to, to pinpoint which component um, in, in, the JV, in the JVM that has problem. Uh, we want to automate Aquavit verification process so that will be more user friendly. And then um, the collaboration, we constantly collaborate with different, you know, uh, different communities and research group. We actually working with, um, for CAS project, we're working with Dr. Woodin from University of York. Um, the idea again is that we have the test output data, we have the Git, um, issues and we have the commit issue can we leverage though all those information to help us um, using machine learning to do um, the the issue um, triage right um, can we use the machine learning to identify which component the problem is or even use machine learning to help us to 
um, suggest who is the best person to fix it, and even suggest the best fix for, for the issue. Uh, we have been actively participating in Can OSP project. I think we already did three terms already, three, four terms with them. Uh, they all like really successful. Uh, we get really successful results from them. And then we also um, are doing the outreach project. And then um, um, we're constantly looking at the third party applications um, to incorporate, incorporate it into Aquavit in that ex external pro uh, folder. And also we actively participate, uh, uh, collaborate with enterprise customers. Um, I think that's it for it the presentation. <laughs> it is, and it's a lot of information. But what I wanted to say, um, as I, I've seen, these are some of the things we've been talking about for the last year, Lan. But when I rewatch or re, when we revisit some of these points, I do want to call out that what you're talking about in the last part of this presentation, all of those features that you were highlighting, the power of those features isn't that you can do it with against the open JDK tests that are in that project or the functional tests that are over in the open J9 project or the power of it is that we can apply all of those features to any test material. Mm -hmm. so when you look at this collaborations bullet, the second last bullet point, when we're saying third party application projects, that means we're taking functional tests from some of the largest Java applications out there, the open source ones, because remember we're open and transparent, and we're able to quickly incorporate them and check that one, we can run them on this bespoke platform uh, against this version, and uh, uh, and we can do that really within minutes instead of having to figure it out and and uh, plug it in, and then it shows up in that third layer, mm -hmm. that RSS layer, where we can apply filtering and sorting and machine learning. Uh, to kind of gain more information about how Java runs and how we should be test, how we can test it better. So it's pretty exciting uh, stuff that I hope people uh, are equally excited about. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I should also note uh, that CanOSP is a Canadian university program where university students come and work at open source projects for a term uh, as part of their coursework. So we've had a lot of fun uh, working with that and all of these um, open source projects that bring new contributors into the project. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Lan and uh, Shelley, for uh, this very great uh, presentation. It's really impressive to see such a multi-layered test suit. Uh, sweet, uh, I never thought that I would uh, say something about tests. <laughs> 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 that there's such a, a, a impressive architecture uh, behind something like that. But uh, uh, given the the task, um, it, you. Know, you, you made it very clear that it's needed to uh, see what's going on. Um, now, there's some more time to ask questions. Um, if you want to do that, then please post them to the um, YouTube uh, chat and we'll um, yeah, ask them here. Yeah. Um, then um, I also uh, thought when, when I uh, saw that there must be a, a, a large team, like 10 plus people uh, behind <laughs> that, setting it up, maintaining it and, and everything. Can, can you give us an idea? Um, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> At the height of it, it's usually about four people, four and a half. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's 
that's that's really even also very impressive what i want to say about that uh, i don't want it to remain like that because of course the more Mm -hmm. heads together and hands together the faster we can go on some of the cool stuff but i do want to say there is the uh, something about mother of invention so the reason there is so much automation and impressive uh how do we reduce the workload is because no one invests in testing. No company is putting tons of money towards it. So shift it left so all companies can work together and then do it as smart as we can because otherwise it will be under invested in. So I think that uh, this project has shown when we come together, we can go farther faster <laughs> yes and and, and it, did, did i understand it correctly it, it not only benefits the the adoptium uh, the the tamarine uh, build but all of the uh, oh, yeah. DVM yep. distributions right. and at, at the market adoptium marketplace that's right? what's Im- that's what's important yeah. and impressive about this so uh mm. the that test when lan was showing the slide about generating those jobs Mm-hmm. The impl, and she showed it was her pro- the project she's focused on J9 implementation. Uh, just as well, we can uh, generate for Temerin. Azul generates, uh, Microsoft generates, Alibaba Cloud, Huawei. All of those folks listing in the marketplace all run mm-hmm. these tests. All now are also contributing some of their internal tests to the suite. So. It's becoming quite a center of activity and also just the right approach because we're not competing over tests uh, Mm -hmm. and we want the quality of Java to be raised higher. So we can do that together here at this project. So not not every distribution maintaining their own test suite or or something like that or in in private close something but that open idea i really like that yeah that's that's really good um speaking about contributing are are you looking for additional um (laughs) test suites and and what what kind of of tests could that be or is there any specific well that's the beauty of the system so it can be any type of test using any type of framework because we hook it into that test kit gen piece um, of interest to us of course um, are anyone with interesting security tests we already have a growing set of those but we're always interested in more um, for the performance benchmarks we have we run all the Takapo. we have a bunch of the renaissance mm-hmm. ones we also have some individual ones. And we even add support for the performance benchmarks that vendors need a license for. We don't run them in the open because again, we're open transparent, but you can easily okay. plug in parsers for any benchmark. So uh, mm-hmm. I think if we're looking for contributions for test material, uh, there's a few areas we have, we're running the micro profile TCKs. Um, recently, I talked with some folks from Jakarta EE and we'll plug those uh, TCKs into the suite. We don't have to include them. We have a level called dev. So as we add new test material into the suite, it doesn't become a blocking test, blocking a release at the beginning. We put it into mm-hmm. a dev level so it can be vetted and make sure that it's stable enough to uh, give to all the vendors. Cause we don't want to have their pipelines suddenly fall over because we're bringing in random tests. So we mm-hmm. have that uh, ability to vet test material. Um, but if, yes, if uh, there's already a large set of um, application tests in the mix, one mm-hmm. of the things we'd like to do is automate the updating of the versions mm-hmm. of those. So if we're running uh, a particular der- version of the Derby functional tests and they've released a new version, ma- we manually update that in a single location now, but that is a next step. We should just automate that. Cause again, let's see if we can do our jobs without doing any work. 
would be the <laughs> <laughs> would be what we're talking. <laughs> it's called efficiency. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Without doing so, any manual drudge work. <laughs> yeah, I I think this is this is a very efficient project, um, <laughs> given the, the the output it produces and the value. Um, I'm I really looking forward to uh, see what your next steps will be and uh, what the next talk about yeah. Aquavit will uh, be about. Well, I'm and, excited, uh, by the way, about that change-based testing. Lan was underselling mm -hmm. it, but uh, <laughs> if you can imagine that any PR that you would run uh, uh, would look at the code coverage information and analyze mm -hmm. the code and decide which tests you needed to run that would actually catch defects and mm -hmm. not have to blanket run the entire suite. That'll mm -hmm. take us from a two hours of test run against a PR to a three minute test run. Mm -hmm. And so we can then be very uh, generous with our machine mm -hmm. time and start so, to so share we, that we, with the rest of the we, we, we see the next level uh, at AI application at the horizon, selecting the proper tests for uh, the, the changes you made, and um, uh, uh, yeah, helping the year to provide provide better feedback. And I see Garrett also has. Uh, <laughs> yes, now that we are talking about that, uh, I was in the background, but I'm very interested in uh, into this uh, test optimization stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you plan to, to isolate it as a separate component, uh, this prediction things? Because there are some commercial products, I think, from, from Gradle where they have uh, um, uh, test impact analysis. And there's also a German company, uh, maybe Tobias, you know them, CQSE um, in Munich. Um, they, they also have a commercial product for that, but uh, I think there is no open source product or no, no, right. not, uh, no successful open source products uh, or a com uh, component available. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right now, um, I know we have prototyped a few things in our repository called Aqua Test Tools because it's just a suite of tools. But for the change, there's two pieces that we mentioned the change based testing, which is looking at the source code. Uh, seeing what the change was and determining what tests covered it. So you get code coverage. And this is can be generically applied to any type of thing, but our focus will be open JDK code changes. Uh, then there's the other one, which is the bug prediction service. And we have already previously written this, but back when source code was kept in not GitHub. Um, and that's based off of a, a research paper that came, I think, from some Google. Uh, Google employees okay. that authored this. But essentially, it's an algorithm that looks at if you've made changes to source code and you're heavily hitting a, a particular files in that source code, changing it often, uh, and you can look and see that that file, let's say we're talking about a specific file, was changed this many times in a certain time period because of uh, fixing a defect the likelihood of more defects in that file goes way up and there's a score you can give it. So yes, that one can just be created as an open project. And the idea would be you can point it at any GitHub project and it's going to tell you what are your top three files that have the highest scores, meaning you better pay attention to those because if you don't have enough testing against those, that's where most of your bugs are living. And you can do it by component as well. So instead of looking at files in a open source in a GitHub project, you could say if they're divided into GC and VM and JIT and all this different components, you could say hone in on this or hone in on that. So it's kind of a neat uh, little tool that you would add to your suite of tools in order to make sure you're doing the right thing. You're focusing in the right areas. Yeah. And of course, what we haven't talked about is how this all relates to support. So you know, Gerd knows this because uh, at the Adoptium project, we have a support repo where people can mm -hmm. register their problems. And if we're starting to see a trend of, uh-oh, a bunch of people are reporting font issues, 
uh, mm -hmm. what's happening there, we need to be able to react in Aquavit to say, are we not covering enough uh, certain packages like, uh, you know, Java AWT and Swing? Are we missing tests? Did we exclude them and they're not running even? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we need to do lots of cool other things and we need more people to help. So please come. <laughs> I, I'm I'm taking notes, and I, I see we will have a, yeah. a, another uh, Aquavit talk about uh, <laughs> these uh, additional well, topics I think and, also and developments. We'll try to bring you a yes. demo as well, because it really shows off well when you see these tools running live. Okay. Cool. Yes, okay. perhaps you want to come I, to Javaland I, next year, and uh, so that we can see you over there. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to. Thank everybody, um, especially you two, for giving the presentation, coming to us and uh, uh, um, sharing with us. And I hope you get some feedback, more committers. Um, and and um, thank you again. And uh, now I want to give our attendees a little bit of uh, time for refreshments. Exactly. And, uh, so uh, please feel free to uh, join the, the work adventure world again. Um, chat with others and uh, have a good evening or a good day, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A good afternoon. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, we love iJug. We love Germany. So, uh, yeah, expect to see us crashing Javaland if we could get the travel approved. <laughs> We're looking forward to that. Okay. Awesome. Thank so, you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You.